So can Bitcoin hit $65,000 a coin by the end of 2021? For the first time on this channel, I'm actually going to give my view of where I think it's going to land. I'm going to give a prediction. And the good news here is that this is already in the diary to happen. I'm going to talk you through the catalyst. I'm going to talk you through some numbers. I'm going to talk you through the rationale, why I believe that this is going to happen by the end of this year. I'm also going to give some risk warnings because we're talking about crypto after all. This is no time to be YOLOing and FOMOing into crypto. Just because you watched a video on YouTube and many others just like this that are saying that Bitcoin will hit $65,000 this year year. Now, in March, on March 26, to be exact, I made this video and I said this. First and foremost, I think it's really important that we acknowledge the significance of people like Fidelity now submitting applications for a Bitcoin ETF. This will essentially open up Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as a whole to a completely new market. Now, the crux of that video was basically explaining that there were a number of investment houses and fund managers in the US who were approaching the SEC for approval of Bitcoin or crypto ETFs. Now, if you understand how an ETF works, it allows you to invest into an asset class like equities in the current forms, and it allows you to buy a basket of them. And it also gives you the ability to access them at very, very low cost, but also to be able to trade on them as long as you have a market open. You take that concept from the stock certain shares world and you put that into the Bitcoin and crypto world, it gives you easier access to cryptocurrencies at pretty low cost and it gives you the ability to trade them easily as well. So the appeal for institutions, fund managers, is apparent because it will give them a vehicle to invest in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin without having to go through the hoops of actually buying the Bitcoin themselves and storing the Bitcoin themselves. So it's a huge, huge catalyst. Now, back then, the SEC wasn't having any of it. They simply said, no. But fast forward seven months, and we find ourselves in a situation where there are four ETFs that are due to be approved by the end of this year. The first one is called Global X Bitcoin Trust. The second, Valkyrie XTBO Bitcoin Future Fund. You've got the Wisdom Tree Bitcoin Trust and the Krypton Bitcoin ETF. Now, you might want to put these dates in the diary because these dates are really important. And I'm sure there's going to be a frenzy as we approach that first date for the first one to be approved. So the first approval date is November the 21st for the Global X Bitcoin Trust. Then we've got next the Valkyrie XT, XBTO Bitcoin Future Fund on December the 8th. You've got Wisdom Tree uh, Bitcoin Trust on December the 11th. And on Christmas Eve, December 24th, we have the Krypton Bitcoin ETF. Now, this is a huge, huge deal. They've gone from no to we have four ETFs, which they have diarized to actually approve. This is a huge, huge moment for crypto and a huge moment for Bitcoin. And for me, I'll go through the numbers fairly shortly to talk about how it's going to get Bitcoin to 65,000 and possibly beyond because 65,000 is actually more realistic than you think considering the amount of money that is actually available out there. And I'll talk a little bit about that later on. But those dates are really important. Now, in that video in March, I explained why this is such a big deal and why we need institutional money involved in things like Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in order for us to get to the point of mass adoption. These investment houses hold millions, billions and trillions of dollars of pounds worldwide. And being able to have something that is approved, regulated, by a well-known regulator will open up the floodgates, number one, to other ETFs, but also to other territories around the world also approving products like this so that fund managers, investment houses, pension funds can start to have a look at it as a recognized asset class to invest in. Come on in, boys. The water is fine. There are lots of videos and lots of speculation around Bitcoin reaching the $500,000 
mark. In my opinion, this is how it gets there with the introduction of products like this that will allow the big money from institutions to flow in. And look, let's talk about some of the numbers because the numbers are important. Now, if you have a look at um, commodities and the global exchange traded products, the numbers out there are around about $263 billion in value, but that number doesn't include all of the mutual funds across all of the world. So if you factor in all of them, that number's more like 500 billion in opposed to 263. 263 is still a lot. But what the speculation is, is that you would expect that if money is going to move from that little segment of 500 billion, and I say little and you'll understand why I say little in a moment, that you can expect, hopefully not being too ambitious, a 1% adoption or move into any of these ETFs. When that happens, that means you're going to get 5 billion potentially go into Bitcoin and that will take it to $65,000 a coin. Now, what you should see or what you would expect to see is in the run up to all of this being approved and literally November is round the corner because November the 21st is, my is the day before my birthday. We will see an influx of traders taking positions, maybe investment houses taking positions and that should actually move the price of Bitcoin up. We're seeing part of that, I believe, right now. But again, this is just my opinion, guys. You've got to do your own research on this. So just looking at the global exchange traded products alone, at 500 billion, a 1% adoption, taking Bitcoin to 65,000, we haven't even touched on pension funds. Now, globally, pension funds are valued at $51 trillion, not billion. Trillion. That's with a T. $51 trillion. Now, I think it would be unrealistic to assume that you're going to get a 10 or a 5% allocation or diversification of that money into things like cryptocurrencies. And we'll talk about the pension funds in a minute because there's a, there's a couple of good points of how pension funds invest their money and how they operate that is pertinent to this. But again, I think it's safe to say that you could maybe expect a 1% diversification of that money into Bitcoin. If that happens, this just doesn't take Bitcoin to the moon. It takes Bitcoin to an entirely different galaxy altogether. Everybody ready to say goodbye to our solar system? Now, regulation, because regulation coming into this for me is a, is a, is, is a good news story. I've said this before on the channel. However, I think for many people, this is going to be received with mixed emotions. Number one, it is good for the long term, but I think in the short term, this will probably have a negative impact on crypto prices altogether, because the question will be, well, how far is this regulation going to go? Is regulation going to be sensible? And once you have regulation into something, you then have to talk about taxation. What will that start to look like? We already know that governments around the world have started to make moves on the taxation front already throughout this year. But what does that actually look like with actual, actual, t you know, regulation of a cryptocurrency, a Bitcoin ETF. So those are all things that I feel are big considerations and catalysts for this potentially happen. I'm really, really bullish on this over the long term because I think this really does have a place and having institutions and fund managers come in to participate in this is only good news. They can only do that under the guise of regulation though. And so guys, this is where the boring bit comes in where I give you the risk warnings because yes, you should not be YOLOing or FOMOing into Bitcoin just because you've watched a video where I talk about the fact that I believe it's gonna to go to $65,000 plus by the end of the year. I won't be as bullish to say it's gonna to go to 100,000 pounds, but there are things in the calendar to really make this possible. And if, if these institutions really pick up and get a massive influx, $65,000 is only going to be the start. But please be careful, only invest what you can afford to lose. Don't overextend yourself. Make sure that you do your own research. Again, I'm not a crypto expert. This is simply me, again, going on a journey where I'm learning about Bitcoin and its, in, and its uses and, and crypto as a whole. As you guys know, I'm really excited about DeFi. This doesn't necessarily speak to DeFi specifically, but it is an exciting development either way. I'd love to know what you think in the comments. Do you think I'm being a little bit 
bullish by saying 65,000 plus, or do you think the opposite? There are, there are strong arguments to say that actually we're getting to the point where Bitcoin is testing that resistance level. And if it doesn't break through that, it could potentially fall to $40,000 £40, a coin, particularly with a lot of the economic and stock market pressures, inflationary pressures that we're facing right now. So this could go either way. This is an opinion. You have to do your own research and you have to you know, make a decision based on your own convictions. If you are investing, find something that is easy for you to invest via. I use eToro. There is a link to them in the comment section below. If you're investing large amounts of money, then you probably want to go into a, into a cold storage wallet and make sure that you have really good protections on the Bitcoin that you buy. But again, let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think will happen with Bitcoin by the end of this year? Is it 65,000? Is it 40,000? Give me your predictions. I will catch you later on.